Good morning, everyone. Uh, in this class, uh, we'll discuss about the antivirals and the vaccines. So we have seen both the bacterial infections as well as the viral infections, and uh, we will talk only about the antivirals as well as the vaccines. See, viruses are very potent infections, and you know they have a very short incubation period, and they are self-limiting, and they create a lot of um, pathogenic involvements. And uh, even though it is self-limiting, you know, there are certain antivirals that can prevent them from replicating. And at the same time, you know, as a prophylactic measure, there are vaccines available to, um, to stop them at an early stage. So when you talk about viruses, they do not fit into the mold of a living organism. You know that we have extensively studied that in the introduction part. And they are all parasites. And they can't make anything of their own, so they actually involve in using the cellular machinery of the host. And they are speculated to be the segments of DNA that get integrated into the human host cells and they become the reason for the infection. Viral structures can be majorly divided into four important things. The central core contains the nucleic acid, either the DNA or the uh, RNA. Uh, that is a capsid, the protein shell, which is made up of the capture mirrors that you see here. And some of them have spike-like projections, uh, which are called the spike proteins, made up of spike proteins. And they, some are enveloped, and uh, they contain the cellular lipid. And we know that uh, during viral replication, what happens is, if there is going to be a lytic uh, phase, the viruses blast open the eukaryotic cell and part of the cell membrane happens to be the viral envelope. And why do we need antivirals and vaccines? So just for the prevention sake, we need vaccines, but at the same time, for the treatment, we need antivirals. And there is no effective vaccines for many diseases. Of the viral diseases the reason being we have already seen that you know there is a change of genome and there is a lot of uh, variations and mutations within the viral strains so approximately you know there are more than 42 antivirals as of now that are available in the commercial market so they either aim at the viral or the host protein for example 16 anti hiv uh, formulations are there approximately five anti cytomegalovirus um, formulations, 5 anti-HSV, herpes simplex, and um, one of the respiratory syncytial viruses and three anti-hepatitis um, viral uh, antivirals and uh, around four anti-influenza and few with the synthetic biology approach. Synthetic biology is the one where you know they, they cut and paste uh, the important protein coding segments and make their own uh, chimeric uh, uh, formulation uh, by means of this uh, synthetic biology. So in the drug development, there are several known methods where they are being used as markers, okay, in the viral uh, infection. Number one is the important intervention to prevent viral entry. Certain drugs actually prevent viral entry. Some of them target RNA and DNA replication in the cell and some target the transcriptase factor for the viral DNA. So we all know that RNA-dependent DNA polymerase, DNA-dependent DNA polymerase is the help in the replication part. And at the same time, there are certain viruses which need reverse transcriptases like HIV. And these are the pretty much the focal points where they are being uh, intervened. So destroying the viral protease so that these proteins are not cut. We all know that virus produces a polycystronic um, protein, which is cut into uh, different individual proteins. So imagine if there is going to be no protease action, there is no cutting of individual proteins and there is no individual protein coding function. And the last one would be the stopping the release of the mature viruses from the host cell. It's like, you know, to abort the viral infection when they are assembling or when they are in the assembling stage. 
So the methods of us attack of the uh, viruses, we all know that what happens is, you know, the first and foremost thing for the viruses, you know, they have to find a suitable receptor in the eukaryotic cell to bind. Once they bind, they just inject their DNA and, you know, uncoating occurs, whether it's going to be RNA or DNA. Here I'm giving an, an RNA as an example. Then after that, what happens is, this RNA, they go on to translation and proteolytic processing. So ultimately, what happens is, there is transla a translation and production of early proteins, as I've told you, they code for the nucleic acids, new nucleic acids. Late protein comes at the later stage during assembly. And then the RNA strand is replicated by the, so it is going to be a single strand RNA virus, RNA dependent RNA polymerase, etc. And ultimately, a polycystronic um, protein uh, is being produced, and you know, they cleave into individual proteins. And ultimately, you know, these form the late proteins as well, and they help in the assembly. And these late proteins help in the formation of the skeleton or the external surface. So once a matured virion uh, is being made within the cell, they are released uh, by the lysis of the cell. So the antivirals aim at many areas of the cycle. Number one, they inhibit the viral replication. So with minimal or no interruption to the cellular process. They should stop the viral replication, but they should not stop the replication of the human cell. So the viruses utilize so many host functions. So they poison the virus and it's also a poison to the host. So using an antiviral is have to be a poison only to the virus. So there is no broad spectrum antivirals here. When you just see uh, the important uh, interventions, you could see that certain viruses, they block the, um, the immunoglobulin formation or they help in stopping the viral attachment. Certain block the further attachment by the spike protein and by the certain important proteins. For example, in influenza, there is a protein called neuraminidase which helps in the attachment, it's being blocked. And some, they, they finally block the final package, for example, rifampin, okay, as in the case of vaccine virus. And uh, some also block the uncoating of the virus. When the virus goes inside, the uncoating of the virus have to happen to expose the nucleic acid that could be also stopped. And some could also block the production of early proteins and some could uh, block the transcriptase, uh, reverse transcriptase inhibition and some could uh, block the proteases where you know they bring about the assembly and uh, finally the uh, packaging and, and assembly is also being blocked so that you know when they come out they become an abortive infection. So there are two important uh, analogs that are being used, purine and pyrimidine analogs. So, you know, they are analogs which resemble the same as the A, adenine, guanine, thymine, cytosine. And they actually weave in and they replace the original adenine, guanine, thymine, cytosine in the virus, uh, viral DNA. So the next one is the prodrug concept, okay? So prodrug concept is this drug gets only phosphorylated and then the function happens, okay? So this phosphorylation is happening only at the presence of viral or cellular enzymes in order to become active and this is a very protective mechanism where the cells that are not infected with viruses are little protected. And the next is inhibition of the active replication so that you know the viral growth resumes after the drug was removed. So the replication is totally stopped if it is going to be RNA virus or a DNA virus. You know, because of the, the purine pyramidate analog, they, where they go and replace the original uh, ATGC. And when they are replicating, you know, they can't replicate. And uh, need to target 
a viral specific enzymes is one of the important methods so the viral specific enzymes could be so the main antiviral drugs um, that use various approaches are given here you could see here uh, the first one will be the virus absorption inhibitor second one virus to human cell fusion inhibitors viral dna polymerase inhibitors reverse transcriptase inhibitors as in the case of hiv acyclic nucleoside posponates you know these are very specific uh, antiviral drugs that are used on, uh, for dna viruses like the herpes virus and pox virus and inhibitors of the processes that are associated with rna synthesis like hiv um, hcv uh, etc and viral protease inhibitors uh, we have already seen viral proteases are needed for breaking down the polycystonic um, the polyproteins the viral neuraminidase inhibitor for example in the case of avian and human influenza and you know uh, certain imp dehydrogenase inhibitors we'll be seeing them in the detail and adenosine uh, adenosyl hemocysteine hydrolase inhibitors these are the enzymes um, they are used uh, by certain viruses we'll be seeing them in the elaborate fashion so the inhibitors of viral entry and uncoating they target um, uh, for example, in HIV, they have a protein called ENV, envelope protein, uh, with a drug that occupies uh, its CD4 binding site. So we will focus, uh, this uh, um, drug will focus on the CD4 binding site of uh, this envelope protein of HIV. The next one is a viral proteases, um, known inhibitors of HIV proteins, uh, many other viral proteases, example, uh, from viruses such as the cytomegalovirus, hepatitis uh, C virus, where you know non-structural protein 3 is also being used um, uh, as a target for this viral proteases. The next uh, uh, classification of the group will be the viral specific nucleic acid synthesis and processing inhibitors. You know, for example, the uh, targeting of the RNA dependent RNA polymerases, I've just uh, given it as um, the RDRPs from RNA viruses and viral proteins that are involved in cap snatching. In see uh, in the RNA uh, synthesis, you know the formation of a cap is one of the important means by which you know the total transcript is uh, getting transcribed. And synthesis of primers which are helping in the elongation during replication, and also uh, in the secondary structure formation. For example, in the building up of the whole uh, the virus. And uh, certain drugs focus on regulatory proteins. The viruses, they encode numerous proteins that regulate um, and they act as switch, for example, the early, late, intermediate stages of gene expression, etc. So these uh, are the different varieties of antiviral drugs. Number one is the viral absorption inhibitors. The numbers and the names that I've given are priority ones where uh, they uh, they have, some of them they affect the virus cell fusion inhibitors okay like the uh, the commercial drug with the with the code amd3100 the next one will be the viral dna polymerase inhibitors okay so they are all guanosine analogs okay and you know reverse transcriptase inhibitors um, we'll be studying about them in detail and acyclic nucleoside posponates they are a group of uh, drugs Protease inhibitors, and out of which you now we have neuraminidase inhibitors, and the IMP dehydrogenase and the SAH hydrolase inhibitors. We'll be seeing each and every one uh, very elaborately. So these absorption inhibitors are the surface inhibitors. The next one is focuses on the transcription and the inhibitor transcription. The third section, they this group, they inhibit the viral enzymes such as proteases and neuraminidases. And the fourth one helps to inhibit the two host enzymes. Okay, number one is inosine 5 monophosphate dehydrogenase. So it's IMP. And yes, adenosyl hemocysteine, SAH hydrolysis. So the DNA virus affecting the, the DNA polymerase in the herpes virus is, is a very important strategy to stop. So nucleoside analogs or guanosine analogs uh, are being used. You know, nucleotide, uh, sorry, um, so nucleosides are uh, the um, 
the base pairs that are being uh, totally used to build the uh, nucleic acids. And you know, oral product concept is another one where, you know, as I've told you, uh, a free drug is being produced and at the action of the enzymes within the system, you know, they get activated into drug. And another group is the thiamine uh, analog, thiamidine analogs. You know, they are the analogs, they actually substitute the regular base pairs in the sequence so that, you know, the replication doesn't happen properly. The example of a nucleoside analog is the one, a very common drug called acyclovir. They are specific non-toxic and they are highly effective against surface viruses. And, uh, you know, they actually focus on uh, as a guanosine inhibitors because, you know, you see here the adenine, adenosine is uh, given here guanosine is given here and the analogs are given right here so if you just see the analogs you know you would be able to see you know they have exact structure but you know uh, a yeah, side chain is being uh, snatched from the regular guanosine so you know, you know you would you would see here this oh you don't see there okay so this this acyclic sugar group can be phosphorylated for incorporation in the nucleic acid link Okay, so this this OH, the one that is being taken out, they prevent the next nucleic acid to be incorporated if it is going to be um, substituted with this one. So the link to the next nucleic acid in this area is totally inhibited because they don't have a side chain for the attachment of the other nucleic acid. So the other concept is the chain termination and uh, you know this happens in a broader concept where it's, the prodrug is nothing but the precursor to the active antiviral compound and must first have to be phosphorylated uh, by a certain uh, viral enzymes before it can be activated. So phosphorylation is an important process where an addition of phosphate to the side chain of that particular drug. For example, if you just see here, so herpes uh, simplex virus, you know, you have a ACB, a drug, and this drug is phosphorylated here. So this is ACB monophosphate, okay? So this is monophosphate, a single phosphate is added. And then by the help of the GMP kinase, that is another phosphate that is, in, uh, that is attached here to make this ACB as a diphosphate. And this diphosphate in the, in the action of NDP kinase, okay? Nucleotide uh, di, uh, diphosphokinase, you know, they add the other phosphate group and ultimately they become the triphosphate. And now the prodrug becomes an active drug and now it starts its action. The next one is the protease inhibitors. Okay, so what I'm just showing you here is the nat natural substrate for HIV protease. Okay, but whereas this is the protease inhibitor, this is the drug part and this is the natural substrate. So when you see what is the difference over here, the difference is this particular area okay so this particular area where the modification takes place is, is instead of O that is getting attached to there that is a OH here okay so there is a cleavage site here so this structure mimics the natural substrate structure okay so fits into the HIV proactive site and doesn't leave so when they get integrated here they don't leave and you know what happens is this is a very good clear example for the suicide, uh, inhibitory suicide substrate. So this substrate, when they go inside, they replace ultimately and, you know, they fake the system. So that is no proper substrate for this HIV-1 protease to act upon. So if you just see very elaborately uh, virus absorption inhibitors, uh, number one is the polyionic compounds. There are a lot of uh, compounds such as the polysulfates, polysulfonates, polynucleotides, polyoxometaalates, and negatively charged albumin. Okay, so these are all viral absorption inhibitors when they are taken. So how they work, they are negatively charged polymers. They interact with the positively charged uh, amino acids uh, in a specific area of the viruses which get attached to the ligand in the thing. So they, technically they shield the primary binding site of the cell surface. Okay, for example, if it is going to be HIV, when they get attached to the CD4 cells, and you know, the attachment site is totally faked by this uh, polyionic shield, you know, so, so that is a repulsion. So this, uh, this 
kind of uh, absorption inhibitors are used in HIV, HSV, dengue fever, etc. Dengue virus, etc. The next one is a viral a virus cell fusion inhibitors. So, for example, in, in cell envelope, okay, fusion of the viral envelope to the cell plasma membrane has to happen. Okay. So, for example, in HIV, there is a glycoprotein called 120. And we have already seen in the HIV pathogenesis, they have to interact with the CXCR receptor or CCR5 receptor. So, we call this as T-tropic virus if it is going to be CXCR4. A ligand attachment or if it is going to be CCR5 we call it as M-tropic virus. So a good candidate for HIV antiviral is a clear candidate that can stop this this interaction or this this fusion. Okay so the HIV receptor plus the co-receptor when they totally join together HIV receptor is GP120 co-receptor is CXCR4 or CCR5. So when they join together you know, they are pretty potent, but you know, there are certain drugs which do not help in this attachment of this ligand to this protein. So this is a very elaborate structure to not to confuse you, to make it so simple. So this A actually gives the HIV-1 glycoprotein 120. You would see the V2 segments, uh, which are the interacting segments. So this protein folds in such a way, they get, they come to a, a common place for the attachment. So now if you are going to use a CXCR antagonist okay so they what they are going to do is they are going to target certain specific areas and they are not going to produce this proper attachment at all okay for example uh, the the other one which i am just showing you here is a is a nrti so reverse transcriptase inhibitors okay so here the reverse transcriptase inhibitors target the viral reverse transcriptase following this three three phosphorylation uh, action that happens ultimately the pro drug concept we have already seen becomes a drug and the drug gets incorporated into the system so there is no further multiplication of the dna here okay so this becomes an analog and it fakes the system here okay likewise the nnrts uh, we are going to see elaborately they also affect because of a specific configuration uh, faking mechanism. We'll be seeing them in elaborate. So the inhibitors of viral DNA and RNA synthesis, uh, they target the viral DNA polymerase. So what you see here is uh, the acyclovir ACV. So where I've told you that ACV becomes acyclovir monophosphate, ACV diphosphate, acyclovir triphosphate, and ultimately, you know, they come and they inhibit the viral polymerase, there is no addition of further um, nucleotide uh, during the replication. Okay, so this is pretty much the simple thing, you know, that is that I have given it very, very elaborately. Okay, they prevent further chain elongation in this particular area. So there is an abrupt stopping of the DNA replication. So the moderate oral availability of these kind of uh, uh, drugs are very big. Uh, a problem with the prodrug concept because you know when they are going to be taken orally you know the bioavailability when it's taken orally is going to be a very big problem so one good example is the acyclovir the next one is the reverse transcriptase inhibitor so when you just see here the reverse transcriptase inhibitor similar to the same method as in the dna viruses the reverse they this particular drugs they inhibit the reverse transcriptor for example this is a drug called zidovudin or azidothiamidin so this also goes to the same phosphorylation, the same mechanism that you would see here. And finally, they have to just go and stop this reverse transcriptase activity so that it is, the RNA is not transcribed. Okay, so for example, the six nucleotide analog, for example, zero woodin, okay, dida, didanosin, zalcitabin, okay, stavonidin, lamivudin, Abacovir, these are the things that are totally being used for HIV uh, infection and uh, this is also similar to the pro-drug uh, concept. So um, the uh, azidothiamidin or we call it uh, as commercial zidovudin. So this uh, you can just see uh, a small uh, movie here. So mechanism of action of nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor. After entering the cytoplasm of a CD4 cell, the uncoding of the viral core then occurs, 
the matrix core disintegrates, releasing the capsid with the HIV genetic material and associated enzymes into the host cell. The capsid then sheds its coat. The two viral RNA strands, which are coated, and the viral enzymes are then released into the cytoplasm. This now leads to the activation of the reverse transcriptase enzyme. The conversion of viral RNA into single-stranded DNA can now begin. The reverse transcriptase, or RT, now moves along the HIV RNA molecule and copies it into viral DNA through the incorporation of naturally occurring nucleosides. The nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, or NRTIs, compete with naturally occurring nucleosides to prevent their incorporation into viral DNA, and this in turn prevents reverse transcription. The reverse transcriptase enzyme embeds the NRTI nucleoside analog, or inhibitor, into the synthesized molecule of DNA. As a consequence, natural nucleosides can no longer be added to the growing viral DNA chain which is thereby terminated. Hence, this process is called chain termination. Consequently, the completion of reverse transcription cannot take place. Hence, the HIV DNA is not fully formed and cannot be incorporated into the DNA of the host cell. So, the next one that we have seen is... Uh the non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitor, NNRTs. After entering the cytoplasm of a CD4 cell, the uncoating of the viral core can occur. The matrix core disintegrates, releasing the capsid with the HIV genetic material and associated enzymes into the host cell. The capsid then sheds its coat. The two viral RNA strands, which are themselves coated, and the viral enzymes are then released into the host cell cytoplasm. The reverse transcriptase, or RT enzyme, is then activated, and it is now ready to convert viral RNA into single-stranded DNA. At this stage, the non-nucleoside reverse transcriptase inhibitors, or NNRTIs, are able to block the function of the viral RT enzyme. NNRTI drugs target the viral RT enzyme. A NNRTI molecule can bind to the active enzymatic pocket or active catalytic site of the reverse transcriptase enzyme. The binding of an NNRTI molecule to RT prevents the enzyme from being able to convert viral RNA into DNA. Hence, the process of reverse transcription is inhibited and the HIV infection cycle is brought to a standstill. So, we have seen both the NNRTs and the NRT and you know this is uh, a model where now I'm just showing the molecular interaction where you know unique pockets are the interacting sites of this non-substrate binding uh, where you know aromatic uh, amino acids, electrostatic interaction, everything actually favors the drug and mimic the interaction and this is the non-nucleoside NNRT interactions. I don't want to go very deep into that. This is what you have uh, uh, heard and saw in that movie. And this is the, the other one. Um, so just to recap, you know, this is the first thing where, you know, the ASA level which targets the DNA polymerase and then the zero within that targets reverse transcriptase and uh, the other one is the adenovir you know this is an acyclic nucleoside phosphonate okay phosphonates are the ones they actually prevent the phosphorylations okay this is active against the retroviruses hepatinovirus etc okay and um, you could see here the other one is the acyclic nucleoside analog okay so phosphonates and nucleoside analog they target the viral dna polymerases and it's active against the dna viruses so um further down uh, now i'm just coming back uh, to show you uh, what we have uh, seen so far surface inhibitors transcription inhibitors viral enzyme inhibitors and uh, the host enzyme inhibitors 
So the inhibition inhibitors associated with other process also plays a vital role as a target for viral infection. And you know they are also combated for the viral target, viral antiviral target. So for example, targeting integrases. Okay, integrases are nothing but the, the enzymes that integrate the viral DNA to the host gene. So targeting LTR promoters, we already saw that there are both the ends of the RNA, they have LTRs and you know they have the coding sequence for the gene. So when they target the LTRs, there is greater specificity that is needed. Okay, and it happens and in acting as a trans activator protein. For example, the TAT protein of HIV is one of the important things. We have already seen that uh, uh, in the earlier classes as well. The other thing is the targeting cyclic uh, dependent kinases which are required for replication, further replication including many HIV. Uh, we have a very important drug called the flower pyridol that is being used. And you know, there are many enzyme specific uh, interactions that could happen. For example, the helicases, okay, non structural protein 3 um, of certain viral uh, RNA viruses associated with helicase, non structural protein 5B uh, uh, that is associated with the, the RNA polymerases. So they can also be inhibited, even though they are going to be associated with uh, different processes, they are unique for unique uh, certain group of viruses. The viral protease inhibitors, you now you know that you know the viral proteins are functional and you know structural protein, functional protein, they can be inhibited. One good example is the glucose glycosamina glycans, the GAG, GAG polymerase. GAGs are nothing but the, the covering of the HIV uh, molecule which helps in the interaction. And for example, in CMV cytomegalovirus proteases, uh, which are also referred to as assemblins, which help in the assembly. So if this is this process is inhibited, you know, the assembly is stopped. Okay, and certain cysteine proteases of rhinovirus. Okay, so that you know the rhinovirus are the common uh, causes of common cold. And HCV protease, for example, a serine protease that is uh, that is encoded by the non-structural protein domain. Okay, they help in the proteotic cleavage of this non-structural protein. So these viral proteases can also be inhibited to prevent further action of the viruses. Viral neuraminidase inhibitor is more importantly uh, being uh, dealt with and I wanted to focus on this more because they help in the influenza virus and you know the influenza virus has two important proteins the glycoprotein called hemo hemagglutinin which binds to the target cell receptor and they contain terminal sialic acid and the other surface glycoprotein is called as a neuraminidase. So they cleave up this terminal sialic acid. The host cell has the terminal sialic acid and this terminal sialic acid actually interacts with this neuraminidase. Okay, so this is where uh, the, the inhibition happens and you know they will not further promote the viral movements. And you know one, two examples that I can show you here is the xanomivir and os oseltamivir. So these two are very much used. The next one is the IMP dehydrogenase, uh, you know this enzyme is a key in the biosynthesis of purine mononucleotides which are uh, added during the replication process and you know when you are going to hamper this enzyme, stop this enzyme, you know they affect both RNA and the DNA synthesis and hence they might inhibit the synthesis of these things. Okay, there are a lot of broad spectrum uh, antivirals focusing on them, okay, on a competitive inhibition, for example, ribavirin. Is one of the important things. The other enzyme is uh, S-adenosine homocerine hydrolase. Okay, this is an enzyme which is used in methylation reaction. Okay, methylation is the process uh, where you know methyl group is added to strengthen uh, the amino acid, uh, in particular the ma the negative strand RNA, and ultimately the, these methylations uh, help in the stability and function of this messenger RNA without degradation. So then you know that the messenger RNA has to be uh, transcribed and translated. So this could also be affected and you know this uh, strategy is very much effective against certain RNA viruses too. So so far we have covered the various processes and I, we have just focused on as a four different major classifications. So mechanism of action of this is the translation event whereby a host cell ribosome will move along a molecule of messenger RNA and the two of these in tandem are involved in the production of viral proteins. 
These viral proteins, in fact, include the viral enzymes that are synthesized in the form of long precursor proteins. Different types of messenger RNA molecules, in fact, exist in regard to the virus, and these are translated into different types of viral proteins or polypeptide chains. This is the protein cleavage event, whereby the protease enzyme of the virus cuts these long, non-functional polypeptide proteins into smaller individual subunits that indeed are fully functional. This is an essential step in virus replication. The protease inhibitor, or PI, will now attempt to block the function of the protease enzyme. This is the binding of the protease inhibitor to the protease enzyme, an event which is essential in blocking the ability of the protease enzyme to function, and this then results in preventing the protease enzyme from being able to cleave the large non-functional polyprotein precursors into their final functional units. Hence, if we succeed in blocking the protease enzyme, we will simultaneously prevent the virus from being able to fully assemble in the context of new fully infectious virus particles. The blocked protease enzyme is now unable to cut the long polypeptide chains into the smaller individual subunit proteins. Hence, the protease inhibitor, or PI, will block the process of protein cleavage and prevent the formation of new viruses. This then results in the arrest of virus replication and clearly is a step that is essential in preventing the formation of new infectious virus and obviously is a step that has been successfully targeted through the development of new inhibitors of HIV replication that is essential to the success that we have achieved in the therapy of HIV disease.